The streets of downtown Ann Arbor will once again be filled with the color teal when participants return for the annual Time to Teal 5K. The event is hosted by the Michigan Ovarian Cancer Alliance to raise funds and awareness for the disease. Joining us in studio today to share more about the event is Diane Glaza Helbling, event manager for Michigan Ovarian Cancer Alliance. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us, Meredith. We're and I so love the grateful. color. I love Thank the teal. You. You're already repping the teal. So tell us first about how the alliance got started. Yes, in um, 2011, Pam Dahlman and her mother, Jerry, uh, founded our nonprofit. And that was because uh, Jerry got diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And they found that there was a lack of you know, resources and support for uh, you know, those diagnosed with this particular cancer. So they, uh, you know, signed on to, to starting this and we've been in existence since 2011. Wow, and the ovarian cancer is the most lethal gynecological cancer in the U.S. Who's most at risk for it? Well, that's the thing. Anyone with, you know, ovaries at any age can uh, get this, you know, this particular cancer. Uh, we always tell people to, you know, understand what their genetic and family history is. You know, if they have a history of uh, uterine, uh, colorectal, ovarian, uterine cancer in their family, uh, that doesn't mean that you're absolutely going to get it, but know your family history so that you can educate yourself and know that, you know, what your risk factor, you know, is if it's you know higher but um yeah the unfortunate thing is is that it's can impact anyone with ovaries at any age mm -hmm. and so. ovarian cancer it doesn't have an early screening test that women can do so what are some common signs symptoms to look out for yes yeah thanks for asking because that is absolutely right a lot of people don't understand that a pap smear test for cervical cancer and there is no early screening test for ovarian like a mammogram for breast cancer so we always tell everyone to be uh, mindful of the symptoms uh, bloating is very common uh, frequent urination uh, a lot of our survivors have issues where they'll take a bite of food and they'll feel full very quickly, you know, and they haven't eaten anything. Abdominal pain, pelvic pain, of course. Not every survivor gets those same symptoms. Those are just some common ones, but we do tell people to advocate for themselves. Keep a journal. If you start seeing things that don't feel right, and they're consistently happening, you know, mark them down. Go to your gynecologist, talk with them, you know, say, hey, I've been having this happening. A lot of times, you know, people, it takes them a while to get diagnosed because these symptoms can be indicative of other types of, you know, illnesses or other types of things. But we know our body's best, right? And, uh, you know, knowledge is power. So just keep a journal of those symptoms. And if it's persistent, go and see the doctor. So how is it ultimately diagnosed then? Uh, well, if they suspect that you have it, there are tests, you know, blood tests and mm. uh, uh, transvaginal ultrasound that can be done to, to determine whether or not there are tumors. But those are tests, you know, that aren't, you know, offered as an available screening for people every, you know, every year like a breast mammogram. So uh, being mindful of the symptoms, again, being uh, aware of your genetic family history and, you know, if you, you know, around the, dinner table ask, hey, do we have any you know, family history of these types of cancers? If you do, go to your doctor and say, am I a candidate for genetic testing, potentially because I have this history in my family? And just keep being persistent and advocating for yourself. Yeah, and to spread awareness, as we know, you've created this wonderful event that's in Ann Arbor every year. I've been to it. It is like a, a sea of teal and there's tutus. It just, it's a lot of fun. You can't miss it. It's all throughout the downtown area. So tell us a little bit more about the event. Yeah, thank you for asking. Yes, it is on May the 12th and uh, our registration opens at 7 a.m. Our 5K runners go out at um, eight o'clock and we also offer a um, one mile fun run walk for those who aren't interested in you know doing a, a 5k uh, more family friendly and, and those who aren't interested as runners and uh, those go out at 8 10 and it's just a wonderful morning of you know celebrating um, our, our mothers and those that we love as mothers you know being that it is on Mother's Day celebrating our survivors you know the warriors who are in the fight honoring those who have passed away from it you know and, and giving families an opportunity to come together and and, and uh, honor that person and we have all sorts of great things happening day David Zinn, who's the famous chalk artist, is going to be with us doing a chalk art demo uh, before the runners go out. We have uh, plant giveaways, and um, our fun run uh, ends at the Washtenaw Dairy, so the kids and the families can get ice cream at the end. And it's just a beautiful day and a wonderful morning, and everybody will make it home plenty of time to celebrate with their moms uh, the rest of the day. So come on out and join us. And they can find out about registration at mioka.org. That's M-I-O-C-A.org.
Perfect. It really is such a fun event. Thank Diane Glaza-Helbling with the Michigan Ovarian Cancer Alliance. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you.